you know, we see how the ruling is, and if the ruling is adverse, uh, then you know, we, we, just, we just have to measure and evaluate that at that time. I remain and stand behind the issues raised in that motion because I submit that it is the prudent course for our judiciary to be highly guarded uh, on those issues. And I recognize that they got to be careful not to you know, disqualify themselves out of every case. I mean, that, that's, it's a tough call. And um, Illinois politics makes it really tough on judges uh, because they have to be elected in this state. So I, I recognize those issues, but uh, you know, my personal view as a downstater is uh, it's pretty darn corrupt in Illinois. And I know our perception downstate is that we, we want to see that the process and the institutions, uh, not aspersions on the individuals, but that the institutions uh, and our procedures do more uh, to protect against that. Could That's uh, attorney Jerry Stocks after last week's Illinois Supreme Court hearing of the gun ban challenge that was brought by State Representative Dan Calkins and Stocks had initially in that case filed for two judges, two justices on the Illinois Supreme Court bench to recuse themselves because they accepted a million dollars each from Governor J.B. Pritzker when they were running for the office last year and they also accepted six-figure campaign contributions to their campaign funds from Illinois House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch, both of whom are chief defendants in this case brought by Dan Calkins. Uh, and uh, these justices were on the bench whenever they heard oral arguments last week. Uh, so uh, Stocks says that uh, he could use a Caperton v. Massey challenge taking it to the u.s supreme court uh in this idea of judicial ethics judicial integrity and whether there's bias or even the uh presumption of bias which is enough to denigrate the public's view of the judicial system welcome back springfield's morning news i'm greg bishop on 92.7 wmay springfield's news and talk if you uh check out gunssavelife.com you'll be able to see uh, a, a a blog post recently uh that uh, lays out another avenue while jerry stocks is thinking i'm gonna go and possibly depending on the ruling that comes out of the illinois supreme court we could go further with this idea of judicial ethics there's another avenue and this is being brought up by a variety of people, uh, the Judicial Inquiry Board. What is the Judicial Inquiry Board? Well, uh, Gun Save Life, uh, they explain it in some detail and they give uh, some resources for people to check out. And John Bach joins us right now to talk more about this. John, I've had conversations with a lot of people since this was revealed back in March uh, that uh, the Supreme Court justices had uh, received a million dollars each from Governor J.B. Pritzker. And even when I asked the governor, he said it was ridiculous to think that there be a conflict of interest there uh and uh, later downplayed it saying hey he's just the governor and you know they had governor rauner was a named litigant in a bunch of cases and they switched it over to pritzker whenever he came into office well the difference here is the governor signed this particular bill that's being challenged so while jerry stocks has the caperton challenge that he has in his pocket and he could take it further uh there are other avenues the public needs to be aware of and that's the judicial inquiry board and i've had some people reach out and say they've got one filing that's already been made uh and there could be more. Tell us about it. Good morning. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yes, this is all about protecting the public's perception of an independent, fair, and impartial judiciary. And we've got uh, the Code of Conduct rules here in Illinois, the canons of conduct uh, they're in. And that's what we're working on here, because not only did uh, J.B. Pritzker and uh, uh, or, uh, John, Don of uh, and Chris Welch donate to these campaigns, but so did Senate President uh, Don Harmon. He donated $700,000 between the two campaigns. You've got three men there that are very in a, named defendants in a very high profile, very political court case, just months later uh, being considered in front of these jurists who received all this money. And, and then on top of that, you've got these. Uh, uh, endorsements from GPAC, the Gun Control uh, Political Action Committee here in Illinois, who endorsed uh, both uh, Rochford and O'Brien for the Supreme Court. And they specifically stated on their website that those endorsements were a result of a questionnaire where the candidates supported gun bans uh, and magazine bans 
as one of their top priorities. And uh, both of those uh, obviously fall into the, the category of what's supposed to be prohibited to protect the pr- public perception that the judiciary is impartial and unbiased in hearing cases. And while the governor may believe that uh, these don't rise to the level of demanding disqualification from serving, we believe that uh, they certainly uh, rise to the level of uh, uh, impacting the public's perception of an impartial uh, uh, Supreme Court. And we think that's wrong, and we're going to give the the system an opportunity to remedy that. So the system, the Judicial Inquiry Board, uh, it's a a board with uh, appointees from the governor. uh, And I've heard some say that it just doesn't have teeth. And that, uh, you know, once you file a complaint, it could go into a black hole. We don't we don't really know the inner workings, per se. We don't have uh, freedom of information uh, through the Judicial Inquiry Board or a lot of what the judiciary does, quite frankly. Uh, so what are you hoping to gain with uh, a, a push, a drive of sorts to say, hey, uh, if you feel that there's uh, integrity issues here, uh, file a complaint. What are you hoping to uh, to achieve? And do you think it is achievable? Well, these complaints are retained forever. They're posted on the public uh, website of this uh, inquiry board uh, on the Internet. There have been 102 complaints filed since 1972, 102 complaints since 1972. We feel if there's a half a dozen complaints against either of these jurists or both of these jurists, it is going to uh, create a uh, earthquake behind the scenes of uh, people uh, saying, hey, maybe this does merit some uh, some concern. But if we don't do anything, you, you don't know. If you, if you don't ask, you never get. Uh, so we're trying to make uh, J.B. Pritzker and his people live to the, the standards and the rules that they uh, have been laid down for uh, maintaining the judicial impartiality in our, our, our states. John Bach with us. He is the uh, founder and executive director of Guns Save Life. You can find out more on his blog, GunsSaveLife.com. John, one other thing I did want to touch base with you on is uh, next month, we think we're going to have uh, some actual movement in a case challenging the firearm owner's identification card here in Illinois in Sangamon County Court. Uh, What's the latest status on this? Uh, the status is we've got the oral arguments on June 20th, just nine days before we have the oral arguments in the federal case against the gun and magazine ban. So we could be facing uh, written decisions uh, on these cases uh, in early July. It could be quite an exciting July. Lots of fireworks, uh, not only at the, the lake and other locations for uh, the nation's uh, birthday, but also fireworks uh, in the court of law for uh, protecting gun li- gun rights. And John, uh, there was a, a measure that did pass the Illinois Senate. It's likely going to come up in the Illinois House. Uh, that's from Senate President Don Harmon to essentially say, "Hey, and, and I haven't read the full bill yet, and 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 we hope to to digest all of it before it actually gets brought up into the House." But uh, from my understanding, it, it essentially would say that if you're going to sue the state, you can only do it in Sangamon County or I think Cook County. Uh, your thoughts on that? As somebody who is regularly a litigant in state court against uh, certain uh, laws that are put into place impacting gun owners? Well, I'll leave it to our attorneys to work on that one, but it sure reeks of uh, unconstitutionality. Um, You file where you reside or you file where the uh, offense or the problem occurred, and that's the longstanding court tradition. And to limit these suits to Chicago, uh, Cook County, and or Springfield, uh, seems obviously uh, trying to rewrite the uh, the playbook. But the bottom line is uh, I'm okay with filing in Sangamon County. The courts there <clears throat> certainly seem uh, reasonable and and uh, ethical and you know, unbiased and all that good stuff, uh, something that uh, I'm not confident that uh, is going on in front of the Illinois Supreme Court right now. Thanks to uh, all this stuff happening there, we just want uh, a fair and impartial uh, judiciary, and uh, I think we get that in Sangamon County. Yeah, and the First Amendment uh, says that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, prohibiting its free exercise, protects free speech, protects the press and assembly, and the rights of the people 
to petition their government in the redress of grievances. Uh, so who's to say that somebody in Cairo, uh, you know, isn't able to petition the government uh, for for redress of the grievances in a, uh, you know, southern Illinois county uh, court system. So we'll see where this goes. John Bach, greatly appreciate your time as always. We'll talk again in the near future. Amen. Thank you, Greg. Have a great day. You too. It is Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. Got to take